as we wait for questions to roll in, uh, I'd like to let you know a little bit more about KPI Partners. Uh, so KPI is a strategic consulting and systems implementation firm focused on Oracle BI, Hyperion, and DECA, and Exalytics. KPI is the recipient of the 2012 Oracle Specialized Partner of the Year Award in the area of business intelligence applications. KPI also won the same award in 2011 when it was known as the Titan Award and is the only firm ever to win this award two years in a row. KPI also offers education and training through KPI University, and I encourage all of you to check out and subscribe to our blog at kpipartners.com slash blog. Next slide. So let's, uh, let's dive into the questions. Um, the first question here, Jeff, uh, you mentioned to not use snowflake models uh, when optimizing design. Can, can you elaborate that on, a, elaborate the, on that a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Um, there's features inside of Oracle Database and SQL Server as well called star transformations. And the star transformation assumes that you are having a large centralized fact table with a series of smaller dimension tables and kind of the hub and spoke kind of uh, picture. Well, the problem is that Snowflake isn't quite exactly what that picture looks like. And so depending upon your data model, two things might actually happen. Uh, first, and, I, and this is common with financial analytics, it gets confused a little bit as to what the actual fact table is. And I've seen cases where, for example, a large dimension that has many snowflakes off of it, it considers that to be the fact table. And so that's not a very uh, efficient uh, execution plan. It will actually issue two star transformations. And so the query performance uh, becomes terrible. It's not an optimized query. Uh, number two, joins in general are just simply expensive. Right? We want to eliminate these joins. Uh, let pre-build it uh, so the database doesn't have to do sorting and matching and, and nested loops and hash joins and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, and so those are some things we want to do. The other, the final thing is it kind of alluding to the first one is the KISS principle. Right, the more complexity you throw at a query, the less likelihood the database optimizer will get it right. I've seen cases where something that seems very trivial. Uh, throws the database for uh, throws a curveball to the database and it and it gets confused and it doesn't do a good job. So keep it simple, keep a nice, clean, simple star. And have you found that there might be some some typical customer performance expectations that uh, that you've come across? Yeah, you know, typically when we when we start off with implementations, uh, you know, the, uh, the there's some percentage of the dashboard that we want to come back within 10 seconds. Okay. So, you know, maybe we identify, you know, the, the, the top priority pages, you know, maybe it's 25% have to come back within 10 seconds, but no page should come back more than 30 seconds, including list reports. Now, customers are willing to make some uh, exceptions for, for those list reports, particularly larger ones. Uh, honestly, if you're bringing back 160,000 rows with, with many, many fields in them, there's not much I can do for you. Uh, but typically, we like to get reports to 10 seconds. I know when I'm on projects, I try to get them to be better than 10 seconds. I set the bar a little bit higher. Um, and so with these performance layers, you can, you can, without a doubt, get 10 second performance. You can get 5 second or 4 second or 3 second performance. Even better. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what you meant by uh, the performance layer is industry standard? Yeah, so uh, that is, uh, you saw that with Oracle's reference architecture. That's kind of a common modern approach. Um, it's it's something that we understand that a data warehouse is not designed for query performance. It is designed for capturing and storing of vast quantities of information. It is process neutral. And so uh, the, the various data warehouse companies and thought leadership out there over the years have said, you know what, if that's the case, uh, we need something that is really optimized for uh, query and access. It's an, it's an access and performance layer. And so this is actually part of Inman's philosophy, Oracle's, IBM's, et cetera. Uh, they understand that the data warehouse and the query layer uh, you have two completely different goals, and so you need to build something that's optimized to help your query performance out. How would you extend or apply this to reports being built using S-based cubes? Um, well, uh, well, it, the concepts we have in here are, are not really applicable for S-based. However, the performance layer could just as well be inside of an S-based cube. It could be a cube. Okay? There's nothing really preventing you from doing that. I would say that the reality is that it'll, it will probably offer you some better performance, but the configuration is going to be a little bit trickier. Right? Many customers don't have S-based expertise. That's another layer of the stack you have to deal with. You're going to have to worry about uh, vertical federation between S-based and uh, the base data model. But if you feel up to the challenge and your requirements work and your hierarchies are, are clean and, and, and such, 
you can actually go ahead and do that as an alternative to building a database performance layer. When the value of the, the Oracle pre-built analytics is in the speed at which you can deploy, where does, where does a performance plan fit into uh, such a deployment? Yeah, to, uh, so it, it's always a challenge to figure out when is the best time in your project life cycle uh, to do this, right? Uh, the, the problem is you can't do it very early on because you don't have anything to build off of. You don't have any specifics. Your reports are changing. Your designs are changing. Your, your database may not be ready with all the proper data and all that kind of stuff. Typically, what, what the way it shakes out is during your system test uh, is when you start to address this. The problem is if you start system tests, you may find out your performance is terrible. And so you're going to have to start implementing some of these performance improvements along the way. Uh, hopefully, as you're going through this, your, let's call it your code, your reports, and your data model, and your RPD are becoming more and more complete and finalized so that you're actually building off of real uh, final solutions. Uh, but generally speaking, you're going to have to do it during that system test and perhaps even towards the end of it. Uh, there really is a catch-22. You can't do it too early, and you can't do it too late. So somewhat building off the, the last question, with, with the performance layer added, there will need to be some additional time to be spent when one does an OBI apps upgrade. Do you have any thoughts on best practices to making such an upgrade easier with the performance layer? Yeah, it, it, again, it, it, everything we've done here, think of them as aggregate tables. That's all they really are. Uh, and all we've, the, the new concept we've added it here is, uh, we'll call them logical aggregates for your dimensions. Okay? Uh, and so the same kinds of things and considerations that you have to go through during an upgrade when dealing with any custom-built aggregates, you're going to have to go through as well here. Right? Now, m most customers with the BI apps will actually build their aggregates through the DAC and Informatica. That's fine. But not 100% of customers do it like that. Many actually will go ahead and use scripts just like you saw on the presentation today. And so the same exact processes have to go through there. Is there a rule of thumb for the optimal number of columns in a skinny dimension? No, it, it's all it's all uh, <laughs> rule of thumb. No, I would I wouldn't say so. I would like to keep the skinny table to be less than 20. Now, granted, if your base table is 25, then you're not getting any real benefit there. Um, I, I I like to keep my skinny table row length, my average row length, to let's say around 100 to 150 bytes. Okay. Again, it's all relative, right? And every time you add something to a skinny table or a mini dimension, you're going to be taking one step away or one step worse in performance. And so it's up to you to say, you know what? I may need two skinny tables. I may, may need one that handles, you know, 80 columns, or let's call it, let's call it 40 columns. I may need another optimized one that handles only the top five. Okay? So you have a lot of flexibility. There's a lot of art that goes into this. It's not just pure science. Uh, how you actually want to make this work. Jesse asks, how do these tuning tips transfer when using the Exadata appliance? Um, so well, first of all, you may not even need to do any of them if you have an Exadata, first and foremost. right? Exadata offers a lot of fantastic uh, uh, horsepower and hardware. Uh, plus there's some additional features in the database engine, you know, columnar compression and whatnot. Uh, but even an Exadata at some point will run, into, run out of steam, particularly if there's a shared load on it, uh, which a lot of customers might do. So remember, Exadata is just a big, super fast Oracle database. Um, so the same exact concepts will apply here. I just think you probably won't need them as much or as soon. So Rob's team uh, is still on 10G. Is there a way to force 10G to use a skinny dimension table? Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? That, that's an interesting one. Uh, I actually have not done that. Uh, I bet you there's probably some some solution, some trick that we could come up with. Um, I've done some things before where uh, we're actually playing with the levels of the hierarchy. In other words, I, before priority groups existed, um, I've actually built solutions where you can mimic the, the functionality of a priority group okay, inside of 10G. Okay? I actually have a presentation on that um, that I've given before. Uh, and then I say, you know what, the great thing is in 11G, you don't have to worry about that. So the answer is yes, you can do it, but it is going to be a, a much more advanced configuration. Would it be okay to create a view for a skinny dimension? Okay, so I, I love this one because uh, this is a very common misconception. Okay, a view does absolutely nothing for performance. Zero. A view is simply a logic encapsulation device. It's like, in programming, it's like uh, making a, a stored procedure, right? All that logic you can access by having a real simple name. 
So a view does nothing for performance, whether it's an OPEG view in the physical layer of OBI or whether it's in the database. Now, a materialized view is different. I, I don't think of a materialized view as a view. Think of it as an automated table, because that's exactly what it is. A materialized view is, in fact, a table with some capabilities built around it to help you manage and rebuild it and do some query rewrite and things like that. So materialized view, yes. Regular view, no. With these performance layer tables, do you uh, have full and incremental loads, or is it always full? Uh, yeah, so, and, and this, this is the same kind of thing goes with the out-of-the-box aggregates. Um, there really is kind of a, an evolution of, of how you need to think about this. Your 1.0 deployment, okay, in pretty much every case that I've seen, uh, people will do, whether it's an out-of-the-box aggregate or whether it's one of these skinny tables here, you do the basics. You do the simple technique, which is a full rebuild, okay? As you run into limitations and performance bottlenecks and you need to improve things, that's where you're going to have to start getting into dealing with basically partition exchange builds, right? Where you're actually only building an incremental data set and adding it into the, um, the, the table, whether it's your base fact table or whether it's an aggregate or whether it's a, 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 a performance layer table. Same exact concepts apply, right? At some point, you're going to have to start switching over if your data sets are very large and your loads are very slow to a, a different way of doing it. And Oracle does have a performance tech note on how to do this inside the BI app. The exact same concepts would apply here. Do you, do you recommend building uh, these performance layer tables with SQL or with an ETL tool like Informatica? Well, if you ask me, uh, I will say SQL. If you ask an Informatica developer, they're going to say Informatica. Uh, that's just the way it is. Um, I, I don't see really the need to do this in Informatica for a couple of reasons. Number one, I've already given, you know, the prototyping has already got the code there. Number two, it runs a lot faster, right, because you're not pulling the data out of the database over the network to Informatica and then right back in. It's very fast to do these create tasks, uh, these, these CTAS operations, or these insert appends or materialized views completely within the database. So my recommendation is have the DAC or Informatica simply call a script to do this. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with that and you, you don't have a, uh, you have enough batch window, then by all means, go ahead and build an Informatica. I just think it's additional work, and it's going to end up being slower for you. So we have a comment and a question from Eric. Eric says, very interesting, Jeff. This seems to be as much of an art as it is a science. Do you have any resources uh, to suggest to learn more on the performance layer and the techniques? Uh, yes. Actually, I, I've written about this in more detail um, on my personal blog site, uh, which is greatobi.wordpress.com. Um, I would also go ahead and Google uh, performance layer. As I said, it is a, it's a common uh, industry standard technique. There's a variety of articles out there on it. And in reality, as you've seen, a lot of the concepts which I presented, uh, they may be a little bit interesting, but they're really not that crazy, are they? They're just basically, hey, reduce I.O., aggregate, bring only the columns you need. Uh, it's not exactly, I wouldn't call it rocket science. It's, it's relatively straightforward stuff. So building all of these performance tables means changes have to be replicated. Can you discuss that in a little bit more detail? Uh, so I think that's more of, a, of an impact analysis or where you, when you, uh, after you deploy it, you need to make a change to some logic. Uh, it needs to be replicated to these new objects. I, I'm guessing that's what the question's at. And, and yeah, this, this is, you know, this is a concern, but really it's the exact same thing you have to do in any aggregate tables you have right now. And the second thing is, uh, a lot of the logic that you will build into your data layer, okay, you're actually going to be building into the base BI apps table. So through the normal ETL process, you compute some field and you stick it into the base table. Well, all we're really doing here in most cases is simply copying that field over into a new table, right? It's a, it's a straight select for, for a lot of the dimensions. Uh, there are a couple cases where, you're gonna, where you will build pre-build some logic into an aggregate table. But guess what? That's what you do with aggregate tables. That's the normal standard operating procedure for that. So nothing has really changed here. Uh, the only thing that's probably different is we're adding more objects into this layer as opposed to just one or two out-of-the-box aggregates. All right, for the uh, final question here, I'm going to throw two questions into one and see how you handle this one. So how is the performance layer different from creating a data mart? And does the performance layer essentially just mean skinny tables? All right, so it is a data mark, okay? And if, you, if we go back to that uh, Oracle slide, the Oracle reference architecture, you saw in the middle in the green there was the, uh, the normalized layer, okay? And that's, that's where data is actually stored and captured. But uh, in the performance layer, the very first thing they had at the top was called embedded data marks, okay? I mean, embedded means it's in the same database, 
right? You're not pulling data out and sticking it somewhere else. It's inside the same data mart. And actually, what they didn't say there is a dependent data mart, which means it's derived exclusively from that source. Okay, so the performance layer is that embedded data mart. Okay, and so the, uh, I, originally when I put this presentation together, I had a few slides on: Are the BI apps data model? Is it a data warehouse or is it a data mart? And depends is my answer. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky, right? It has uh, a lot of the characteristics of a data warehouse. It also has a lot of the characteristics of a data mart. So it's somewhere in between. Uh, when you're running it from a performance perspective, when we're looking at this from performance, if you have a performance problem with the BI apps, I would say it's more of a data warehouse. And we are simply going one step further and building that. We're treating it as a data warehouse, so we're building the performance layer on top of it. Did I get all the questions or part of it? I, I think you tackled it pretty well. So I, I think that concludes the Q&A portion of the event. If you want to learn more about working with Oracle's BI applications, please reach out to us through kpipartners.com, and we will have a member of our customer care team assist you with any further questions you may have. Please join us for more upcoming webinars in May and June focused on Oracle's BI applications. Registration is now open through kpipartners.com. We also invite you to follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at kpipartners. And thank you to everyone for joining us on today's webinar, and thank you to Jeff McQuig for presenting. Take care, everyone. Thank you.